Recently, I started doing that like channel membership thing. And one of the perks or whatever they're called is that every month members get to vote on at least one upcoming video. So a couple weeks ago, I put up a vote and overwhelmingly everyone wanted to see Camp Rock. Now, last summer, I did all three of the High School Musical movies, which as everyone knows, were a huge phenomenon back in the day, right? But for whatever reason, I guess I just wasn't watching Disney Channel as much at that point. I never even knew Camp Rock was a thing. Like for me, Demi Lovato and the Jonas Brothers just sort of appeared out of nowhere. Like, okay, I guess these people are famous now. Anyway, back when I did the High School Musical musical videos, everyone told me that I either had to do Camp Rock or don't you dare make fun of Camp Rock. Now, whichever side of that fence you're on, I guess it's time we finally take a look, huh? So Camp Rock starts with Mitchie waking up on the last day of school. Hmm, where have I heard this story before? You know, I get that it's the last day of school and everything, but like, can you imagine being this happy just about anything? Oh man, what's that like? Anyway, so Mitchie really wants to go to something called Camp Rock. Now stop me if you've heard this before, but even though she really wants to go, her family's in a tough spot, and uh, it's not looking too likely. I know you want to go to this camp, and I'm sorry, but we just can't swing it right now. With Dad expanding the store and my catering business just taking off, oh honey, I'm sorry. I know. Um, you gotta go. Last day of school. Don't want to be late. What are you doing, Mitchie? Are you seriously turning down a free breakfast? You know, this is something that happens in, like, I swear, every movie ever. And it always bothers me. Like, the main character's mom or dad or whoever, like, they wake up, like, two hours early or something, making the greatest breakfast you've ever seen. I mean, they got cheese omelets, they got bacon, Texas toast. She even put parsley on the gosh darn thing, all right? And the main character always just takes, like, half a bite, and they're like, oh, gotta go, mom, and just leaves it there. <laughs> what the... <laughs> As you can imagine, Mitchie is pretty bummed about the whole not being able to go to camp thing, but when she gets home from school that day, you'll never guess what happens. Okay, honey, drum roll. Mom. Okay, you're going to Camp Rock. What? Well, actually, we're going. Connie's what? catering is going camping. Business is slow in the summer, this is a steady job, and you get to go to camp at a discounted rate. <laughs> but you have to help out in the kitchen. Oh boy, there's a monkey's paw wish come true, huh? Okay, you get to go to Camp Rock, but your mom's gonna be there the entire time. <laughs> Anyway, so then we're magically transported to Camp Rock, and the movie actually starts. You know, any summer camp you ever go to, there's always one of these kids. Now, it turns out this year is a special year for Camp Rock, because this year, there's a celebrity guest coming, which I'm sure will definitely not result in a bunch of wacky shenanigans for an hour and a half. And that's when we meet Shane. I don't want to waste my summer at some camp. I'm Shane Gray, for crying out loud. Hey, man, we used to love this place. Three years ago, we were campers. Oh, wow. <laughs> Who's the widow baby Nick Jonas over here? <laughs> so that night, there's like an open mic thingy, whatever. And here is where we get a look at what kind of kids they have at Camp Rock. Like this guy just having a seizure. No one seems to care. It's weird, but all right. And of course, it just wouldn't be this kind of movie without a rival slash villain or whatever. The local Sharpe, if you will, Tess Tyler. It's all about the bling. That's why Tess over there runs this camp. Great, something wicked this way comes. Hey, Caitlin, your folks still wowing them on the cruise ship? <laughs> Aw, she's rich and pretty and mean. I don't like her. Mitchie, of course, being level-headed and mature for her age, realizes that spending mental and emotional energy on people like Tess, it's pretty much a waste of time because people like her are means to everyone, and being her friend isn't really so different than being her enemy in the first place. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm Mitchie Torres. Hey, is your dad Nikki Torres, the composer? My dad staged one of his shows. No. So what does he do? He owns a hardware store. But my mom. Yeah? What? Uh, the president of Hot Tunes TV. What? That's not true, Mitchie. Your mom's a cook for the camp, silly. So anyway, this impresses Tess and her friends, for whatever reason, so they offer to let her stay in their cabin. You know, so they can all just fart together, I guess. Now, the next day is the first day of classes, and Mitchie gets picked to sing in front of the whole group. It's up to me. All the never-ending possibilities that I can see. And then, of course, everyone's like, wow. But, as you probably guessed, Tess isn't too excited about some new girl coming in and ruining the status quo, like someone did, you know what I mean? So, she uses typical girl tactics to chip away at her confidence just enough that Mitchie goes along with whatever Tess wants to do. You know, I'm noticing a pattern in these movies here. Can't quite put my finger on it, but I'll figure it out sooner or later. Anyway, after this, Mitchie sneaks back to the kitchen, and guess who just happens to walk right in? 
Hello? 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 Do you work here? I'm Shane. Now, oddly enough, Mitchie isn't really so wowed by some rock star coming in all hoity-toity and basically tells him off for acting like a rock star. But thanks to the magic of Hollywood, Shane doesn't know it's Mitchie because she puts flour on her face. Gets him every time. Can I just talk to whoever's in charge? Excuse me? What? Well, you're kind of being a jerk. And right after this, Mitchie has a hip-hop dance class, and you'll never guess who the teacher is. Grab a mic and a hat. Follow me if you can. Hurry. You know, I gotta say, if I was ever going to learn hip-hop dance from anyone, not sure Joe Jonas is the best choice. But that's okay, because turns out, no one else can learn from him either. Talk about dancing to the beat of a different drum. You wanna get on the drums? Okay, so the answer is no. Now, sometime after this masterclass, Mitchie is going somewhere to do something, I guess, and stumbles onto Shane playing guitar down by the lake by himself like a loser. And here's where they have a moment. <sighs> Can a guy get some peace? Sorry, was that you playing? It sounded kind of different. Than my usual stupid cookie cutter pop star stuff? Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> you didn't. I liked it. It was good for stupid cookie cutter pop star stuff. But then he's like, hey, let me play something for you. And then Mitchie's like, oh my gosh, is this real life? And then Shane's like, yeah, dude. Now after this, Caitlin, one of the girls from before, gets in trouble for throwing food at Tess, who totally deserved it, by the way. Let's just set the record straight on that one. And as punishment, has to work kitchen duty? Oh no, what's Mitchie gonna do? Hey, you must be hands five and six. I didn't know Connie had a daughter. I'm Caitlin. Mitchie? Wait a minute. You're the cook's daughter. Well, that probably could have gone better. So that night is the Pajama Jam, which is really just an excuse to have random musical numbers in this movie, because, I mean, you know, when you only wrote a 45-minute script, you gotta stretch it out as much as you can. Anyway, so here's where Caitlin gets up to show off something I guess she made in Bandcamp like five minutes ago. I feel like there has to be at least one restaurant in, like, Portland or something that plays nothing but that song. And instead of using plates, you know, all the food just, like, comes in a sock. But anyway, Tess, being Tess, interrupts the whole thing so she can be back in the spotlight. You are so full of it! What? You can't stand that people might actually like what other people do. Huh? She said... Whatever, major loser. <sighs> oh, no. No, no, can't do this. I'm done, I'm out. I can't do this anymore, guys. I quit, I'm done. So after this, Mitchie and Caitlyn become friends, but that's mainly just because Caitlyn knows Mitchie's secrets. Uh, it's, it's a bit of an uneven relationship if you ask me, but <laughs> what do I know? Now finally, at the 50 minute mark, the movie actually starts going somewhere. So way back at the beginning, Shane overheard Mitchie singing to herself in the cafeteria, but ever so conveniently, couldn't see her face. And now, finally, he decides he wants to find out who the girl with the voice was. So word gets around and like every girl in camp just kind of starts singing to his face, like out of nowhere. <laughs> While this is all going on, Tess just kind of stumbles onto the fact that Mitchie's mom is actually the chef, and after getting inspired by this random Jonas Brothers song, decides to let the world know her truth. Hey, Mitchie! Tell us about your mom again. She's pretty cool. And? She's a cook. A cook? <laughs> Why does she say the word cook like it's the first time she's ever heard it in her life? A cook? <laughs> Wait, what's this radical idea? Your mom cooks our food and you help her. That's the only way you could afford this camp, right? You know, there really are only a few things in the world as ruthless as a 15-year-old with no adult supervision. But yeah, so now everyone knows the truth about Mitchie, even Shane. And let me tell you, if you thought hip-hop dance class was awkward before... So here is some advice. It's not all about your image. None of it means anything unless people see who you really are. And your music has to be who you really are. It's gotta show how you feel. You want me to express how I feel? Well, my back hurts, I'm tired all the time, and sometimes I look in the mirror and think, Bruh. So, you know, life's great. Anyway, so we're just gonna fast forward a little bit here. Um, uh-huh, let's see here. 
Oh, nope, not yet. Uh, just a little bit. Okay. At some point in time later, Tess frames Mitchy and Caitlin for stealing her charm bracelet and gets them barred from the final jam, which is like the final competition or whatever at the end of camp. And of course, this means Tess gets to be the main attraction. And in case you haven't caught on, yes, a large portion of this movie is basically just high school musical all over again. So then it's finally the final jam. And we basically just get a bunch of songs and musical numbers and stuff like whatever. It's not really important. But right at the end, okay, Mitchy shows up and for one reason or another is allowed to participate. And that's when Shane realizes that the voice he was looking for, the girl who stole his heart, it was Mitchy the whole time. Now in the end, Mitchy doesn't actually win, but that's okay because she gets the greatest trophy of all. So I guess my search is over. That depends on who you're looking for. Hi, I'm Mitchy. I'm Shane. You up for a canoe ride later? <laughs> And then everyone gets on stage to sing one last song about following your dreams or whatever. You get the idea. And then everyone goes over to Caitlin's house to sing some more, I guess. Which, I mean, I gotta ask here. So all these songs at the end and basically just the entire movie itself, it's all about being true to yourself and know who your real friends are and kumbaya and all that stuff, right? But, like, Mitchie just totally blows off her friend from the beginning of the movie. What about this girl, Mitchie? Huh? But anyway, so Camp Rock came out in June of 2008, just a few months before the third High School Musical movie. And I guess Camp Rock was like supposed to be the new High School Musical or something. And I gotta say, Camp Rock makes High School Musical look like a masterpiece. I mean, what even is this movie? Like really, nothing in this movie makes any sense at all. Like things just happen and kids are just like randomly dancing in the middle of every scene. The first half of the movie is almost completely irrelevant. I mean, it would be one thing if this was just some like random direct-to-DVD movie I found for 75 cents on Amazon or whatever, but Camp Rock was a huge deal when it came out. Like, it basically launched the careers of Demi Lovato and the Jonas Brothers. But like, why? I do have to give it some respect, though, for using actual 15-year-olds to play 15-year-olds, because, I mean, that almost never happens. And I'm not saying you shouldn't like this movie. I mean, you know, we all like what we like, and that's perfectly fine. I'm just saying, this movie was really something else. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. So this is the first time I've ever seen Camp Rock. You know, like I said, I watched High School Musical back in the day and then Camp Rock just kind of passed me by. I never heard of it or knew about it until pretty recently. For me watching it now, it's just like, I don't know if it was the budget or just the director, you know, cause I guess it was like a Kenny Ortega joint or whatever. So maybe it was just better quality because of that. But just like Camp Rock is just so bizarre. I think one of the big things for that for me is like High School Musical, you know, just like any typical musical, the songs, cause you know, they sing about how they're feeling or what's happening or like things like that, right? But Camp Rock, like the songs are just songs. Like kids sing songs because they're at a music camp, but the songs have like nothing to do with what's happening in the movie. So it's just like something happens and then here's a song about just random whatever and then it just and then the story continues all of a sudden you know it's like i don't know the songs in this movie kind of ruin the movie in a way just because like it doesn't mean anything or do anything in fact most of the movie doesn't mean anything that's what i thought was really weird about this movie is like you could literally cut out over half of the movie and the story would make more sense that way you know because there's so many things that just kind of happen that just don't mean anything <laughs> it's it's so weird like i mentioned it in the video but like the fact that this movie came out several years after high school musical you think it would be like you know they would have learned stuff from high school musical one and two and then from the production of three and then they would have made a movie that was like better or you know more this or less that whatever but they just made a movie that was like i don't know in so many ways it's just so much worse than high school musical that's just my opinion once again thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe don't forget to turn on that bell so you don't miss any videos from me please consider becoming a paid member really helps me out and you get to pick what videos come out follow my dog charlie on instagram charlie meets pumpkin follow me on twitter let me know what was your favorite part of the video or just say hi or i don't know whatever and above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time. Every morning I wonder why no matter how long I sleep at night my body's always tired. And after sitting down for even just five minutes it feels like my lower back's on fire. And now that I'm 30, I look at myself in the mirror and think, what's the point? That's all I got so far.